And this is episode number eight of my creative edit series. Uh, we're starting out with this image here. A really cool image here with some flamingos out here, a little desert scene, some mountains in the background. Do a sky replacement in this. We're going to start out with this image and we're going to end up with this one here. This is going to be fun. I'm going to show you all the steps I took to get here. So without any further ado, let's get started. I went ahead and reset everything back to the beginning, all right? Okay, so we're starting out with this image right here. Now, the first thing I did was replace the sky, and that is a good idea to do that first, okay? So uh, go into the Creative tab right here and click on AI Sky Replacement. Uh, this is a pretty easy sky to replace because there is no clouds in the sky, so this is a very simple one. All I did here is, and let me turn this, uh, click this toggle to turn this on. And you'll see it here. I use blue sky number three. Now, if you click this drop down, you'll see all your different skies in here. Okay, and you can just click on any sky that you want, like that. Okay, but I chose uh, blue sky three. Hey, you can even click on uh, starry night one if you want to. Okay, so man, you have choices in here, but I chose blue sky three. And these are the skies that Luminar give you with the program right here. Now, I relit the scene. Uh, let me double-click Relight Scene. It defaults to 20. I just took it back a little bit to like an 8. And the only other thing I did here was uh, bumped up the atmospheric haze a little bit just to give it a little more hazy look. And I love that, uh, that adjustment there, okay? So then I went on to uh, the Essentials tab right here. And... Uh, I went into AI Enhance. I love AI Enhance, as you all know. Let's go ahead and turn this on here. Give it a second right there. So AI Enhance. So AI Accent uh, 54. I'll just shut that off so you can see. So I brought that up to a 54. And I really, really like that adjustment right there. And then on the AI Sky Enhancer, took it to a 22. Let me shut that off. And you can see here what it does. So that does a beautiful uh, job there. So he took that to a 22. And uh, then I went to the color color tool right here. And the only thing I did here, and let me turn this on by clicking this toggle. And I love these toggles because you can just click these toggles off and on. So I'll shut it off. Okay, and on. And I on the only thing I did in here was... I thought there was a bit of a color cast in here. You can see some yellow up here in the mountain, so I wanted to reduce that a little bit. So I uh, slid this remove color cast slider up here to 24. And I thought that helped it a little bit, and, and so I was pretty happy with that. And then I went to the uh, landscape enhancer, and let's turn that on, and I'll show you what I did in here. Okay, I really liked what this did, and I used Golden Hour here. It brought out all the orange and yellow tones in here. I like that. The mountain got a little bit yellow here, but I'll show you a little trick how I fixed that. Um, but here, let me shut this off here. Okay, so that's without it, and this is with it. So I just took the Golden Hour and took it from a 0 up to a 77. I went really aggressive here. Because I really enjoyed what it was doing with this particular image. And do not be afraid to move these sliders around and see what they do for your image. And it's, it's, uh, you'll never know unless you experiment. So that is very, very important. Okay. So here's how I handled this yellow up here in the mountains here. So I went to, uh, of all filters, this is a strange one, but there's a cool feature inside of here, and that's the black and white conversion filter. So let's go ahead and click this. And let me turn this on and watch the yellow up here go away when I turn this on. Okay, see that? Isn't that really cool? Took, got rid of some of the yellow cast in the water as well. And I really like how this water turned out right here. There's a little bit of blue in here, but we'll get rid of that later. I didn't like that in there. But let me show you what I did. I used the, uh, there's two different tabs here, luminance. And if we click on luminance, we can... Uh, click on convert to black and white, and then adjust these sliders for our black and white conversion. But I use saturation, and you can see my slider settings here, okay? And uh, let me go ahead and set these all back uh, to the default positions. I wrote my numbers down here so I wouldn't forget. So you can see what I actually did here. So I was having issues with the yellow right here, right? So what I did was I brought my reds up, and I just slid my slider till I thought, 
I like the amount of reds, and I took it up to 110. I thought, oh, that looks nice for the reds and the birds here, the flamingos. I like that. And then I went to cyan, because now I'm working with the sky. And 51, I took that up to 51, as you can see in the sky up there. So I took it up to like a 51. And then the blue is the last thing I adjusted, and I took that up to an 89. Because the sky was a little bit too blue, so I brought it up to an 89, and I was happy with that. But now I got rid of that yellow and mountains. Pretty cool, right? So let's go ahead and toggle this off. See that yellow? And there was some yellow cast in the water here. Didn't look bad here, but I really like the desert feel when I uh, turned the black and white conversion on. Because see that yellow cast goes away in the water. And I really like that. I thought that looks nice. And I liked it on the land down here too. So I'm really happy with that so far. And that was my first phase. And I'll show you what I did from here. I took a little time and studied my image just to see if there was any issues I needed to fix. And one issue was this blue cast on the water. And the other issue was I felt these flamingos on the left, the highlights were a little bit too hot. And the same with some of these flamingos on the right over here. So I needed to fix that. The first thing I wanted to take care of was the flamingos. And, you know, I could have went up to light here and just pulled my highlights back, but I didn't want to globally pull the highlights back. And as you'll notice on the base layer, you do not have a edit mask feature. And I needed to just mask that adjustment onto these birds and these birds here. So what I did was I went up to layers and added a new adjustment layer. Let me go ahead and click that on and you'll see, and you can see the highlights of magically left these birds right here, okay? Uh, and also, let's click on Essentials here, and you'll see I have the light tool open here. Now, another interesting thing with the light tool is it doesn't have a toggle. It just has a reset, so you can't, re you can't toggle on and off your adjustment to see what the effect is done. But you'll notice here the highlights I pulled back to a minus 47, and let's go ahead and click on Edit Mask so you can see after I click Brush here. You can see I just uh, brushed in that adjustment onto these flamingos here. And that got rid of the highlights just on, on the flamingos. So layer masking is such an important thing. So let's go ahead and close this tool right here. And the next thing I did was I am, I'm on a new adjustment layer and I've already used AI Enhance. So I thought I'd like to add some more AI Enhance to this image now that I've made some edits. Nobody says I can't use AI Enhance one, two, or ten times. I just have to have new adjustment layers each time I want to add another incident of like the any particular tool again, all right? So I'm going to add AI Enhance again, so let's go ahead and open it up here. Right now you can see it's toggled off, so let's turn it on here. Okay, so there you can see what, what the effect is done here. So I just took the AI Accent and bumped it up to a 25, and I really like that effect on the image. And then after that, I went and added a color tool right here. So let's open this up right here. Let's go ahead and uh, toggle this on. And as you can see, it removed that blue color cast that was right there. So all I did was went into the uh, advanced settings here and clicked on the blue tab right here and just pulled that blue saturation back. But if and then I masked it in just this area right here because I didn't want to lose any blue in my sky so let's go ahead and click on the edit mask so you can see right here I'll click on brush so you can see I just painted it on right there I'm just gonna go ahead and click done I'm really happy with the image so far and now my thought process is now moving into more creative uh, things that I can do to my image here so now I went to the creative tab here it's a great way to go if you want to get creative and you if you watch my videos in the past you know I love the color styles LUT or lookup tables for color grading your images I wasn't interested in changing the colors on the whole image but just on this mountain here a little bit right here so let me go ahead and open up this uh, color styles lookup table tool and let's click it on and notice that the color just changes a little bit. So what I did here was I, let's click this drop down menu. You know, I went through these different um, lookup tables and I love how you can just hover through and see how it's gonna affect your image. But I found Red Trace and I thought Red Trace was really cool. I love what it was doing to the mountain, but I didn't like what it was doing to the rest of the image, okay? So uh, let's click on Edit Mask here and click on Brush so you can see. I just painted it on the mountain. Let's click Done. 
and I brought the amount up to 30 and gave it a little extra contrast and a little extra saturation. But I was really happy with that mountain there. I thought it looked nice. So here's the before. And here is the after. You know, just a nice little effect in that mountain. It's really, again, I'm thinking more creatively now. And then after that, uh, I went to another tool that I love so much. And that is... Um, in the pro section and that is dodge and burn so let's click dodge and burn open up that tool let me go ahead and turn it on here so you can see what i did and as you can see i just thought i burned some of the shadow areas and uh brought up some of the highlight areas i darkened this little uh, this water shooting through here a little bit some of the sand here I darkened up a little bit and down here in the foreground here so let me go ahead and uh, toggle that off before and after so a nice little creative adjustment in my opinion just a few more adjustments and we will be done the next adjustment we're going to be working with is advanced contrast okay now up on the top of the screen, I'll leave a link for a video I did on the advanced contrast uh, tool. Watch that video because it'll show you in detail how that tool works. It's a little tricky to wrap your head around, but once you get the idea of how it works, you will be happy that you watch that video and you'll be using it all the time. and You'll love it like I do. I'm sure you will. Uh, so, But go ahead and watch that video. So, But right now, it's turned off and you can s just look at the image here. I'm going to turn it on by clicking this toggle. And look at that uh, difference in the image. I really love what it did. And it breaks your contrast down into highlights, midtones, and shadows. But the key to understanding the tool, and watch that video, and I explain all this, is the balance points for the highlights, midtones, and the shadows, okay? But again, here's the before, and here's the after. I just really love that tool. Two more adjustments, and we are done. So let's come up here to layer. I added a new layer here. So it's this adjustment layer two, and uh, what I did was I came to the Essentials tab and I added a color tool because what I wanted to do was I felt the saturation on these flamingos was just a little tad too much, so I wanted to pull that back a little bit. And I needed another color tool, and I already used it in the previous layer, so I needed a new layer uh, to... Uh, to add another color tool here, okay? So let's go ahead and turn that on. Watch the birds right in here, watch their tails. I'll turn this on. As you can see, it just kinda, I just eased off on, off on the saturation a little bit. And all I did here was just pulled the saturation back and I used the layer mask and just mask it on the birds. Let me uh, click edit mask and brush. And you can see I just painted that adjustment on the birds. Click done and one final thing and that's under the pro tab. I wanted to close the bottom of the image off and I wanted to use an adjustable gradient for that. So let's go ahead and open up the adjustable gradient tool here. Right now it's toggled off. Let's turn it on. And you can see it just darkened the bottom of the image right there. And the way that tool works is you click set orientation and this little overlay tool comes up here and then you can just drag this anywhere on the uh, image that you want. And this line in the center is the important part because from this line up is the top portion of the image or of the tool and from this line and down is the bottom portion and this in between these two lines is where it graduates from here to here and from here to here all right and you have a top and that would be this from this line up and again don't forget it graduates slowly and it goes up once it hits its line the full adjustment is on and the same with the bottom uh, from here to here is the graduation then the full adjustment from that line down so I didn't need to do anything on the top and you can see there's no adjustments on the top now when I click on bottom you can see that I just pulled the exposure back to a minus uh, 29 and that just darkened the bottom of the image off closed it off keeps our interest into the uh, center of the image here okay and above okay so let's go ahead and toggle that off there's the before and there's the after and just like that, we are done. Now let's come up here and click on the eye so we can see the overall before and there's the after. I'm really happy with the way this turned out. Well, there it is. I hope you enjoyed this one today. Uh, this is episode number eight in the creative edit series using Luminar 4. 
I love Luminar 4. It is so awesome. It really helps you to uh, get the creative juices flowing. There's so much in it, and I hope you're enjoying this series. Hey, if you enjoyed this video today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click the bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified.